Welcome to the HV Desai Postgraduate Education Webinar Series. This webinar is on A-Scan Biometry. I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Barucha. He is a professor of ophthalmology at HV Desai Eye Hospital. He is an alumnus of Armed Forces Medical College and has served in Indian Air Force for 24 years as a medical officer and an ophthalmologist. He is a postgraduate guide and teacher with an experience of over 24 years. At the end of this webinar, we would expect the participant to know about the principles of A-Scan biometry, contact A-Scan, immersion A-Scan, the limitations and advantages of A-Scan biometry, and special situations in biometry. A-scan ultrasound biometry is a commonly used equipment in ophthalmic practice. In fact, it is an indispensable part of our armamentarium, just like cataract surgery is our bread and butter surgery in ophthalmology. It is commonly used to measure the axial length of the eye, which is very important. It's a very important component of the IOL power calculation. So we go to the principles of A-scan ultrasound ultrasound bio, biometry. A-scan, well, why is it called A-scan? It's because it is an amplitude mode of ultrasound. A thin parallel sound beam is emitted from the probe tip, usually of a frequency of 10 to 12 megahertz. The sound beam uh, bounces back into the probe from the interfaces. And uh, now what is an interface? An interface is a junction between any two media of differing, different densities and velocities. So like there is an interface between the cornea and the aqueous, there's an interface between the aqueous and the anterior surface of lens. Again, between the posterior surface of lens and the vitreous, and there is one between vitreous and retina. And the last one would be between the choroid and the sclera. The echoes received back into the probe from each of these interfaces are converted by the biometer into spikes rising from the baseline. The greater the difference in the uh, densities, the higher will be the spike and vice versa. Looking at the instrumentation, ultrasound biometers come in different sizes and shapes. Basically the console is a box with the electronics inside and maybe a printer. It also has a display, which may be a touchscreen display or a normal display with buttons for settings. So ultrasound biometers, they give up pulsing electricity to the probe tip, where a crystal element vibrates and emits a sound beam of a particular frequency, which is 10 megahertz in this case. A pause of few microseconds occurs so that the returning echoes can be received by the probe tip and converted to spikes on the display. How does ultrasound measure the distance? Ultrasonic measurements are based on how long the sound takes to travel from one point to the next at a given velocity. The formula used is distance is equal to velocity into time. This is programmed into the biometer to calculate the distance between the various gates. We'll discuss gates a little later. Then the distance is divided into by two because the sound wave must come to go to the interface and come back to the tip. So it is twice the distance, so we divide it by two. By selecting the eye type in the measurement mode, whether fake it, a fake it, or pseudo fake it, the element, uh, the equipment is instructed to use the distance formula with the proper velocities between the gate pairs for a particular type of eye. We have a look at the various sound velocities in ocular tissues. So if we see aqueous and vitreous, they are 1532 meters per second. So if you take a globe, which is a fake, you will take a speed of 1532 because basically it is all aqueous and vitreous. The cornea has a little faster speed, which is 1620 meters per second, but being very thin, just 500 microns, we don't really take it into consideration during the calculation. The lens has a speed of 1641 meters per second. However, the, depending upon the grade of cataract, the speed in the lens will also differ. Like a dense cataract may have a slightly slower speed of 1629. The sclera is somewhere in between the cornea and the lens at 1630 meters per second. 
Some other speeds are speed in silicon oil. Silicon oil tends to slow down the uh, sound wave and has a speed of 986 to 1040 meters per second, depending on the grade of silicon oil. Intraocular lenses, depending on the material, also have different speeds. Like PMMA has a speed of 2718 meters per second. Now, what are these gates? Like we said earlier, gates are electronic calipers on the display. The biometer puts up gates at every interface. Like in a four gate system, each of the three sections of the eye is measured individually at the correct velocity and then added together to find the total length. Like you have a gate at the cornea, then you have a gate at the anterior surface of lens, another one at the posterior surface of lens, and the fourth one at the retina. So each of these distances is measured separately and the uh, correct velocity is applied to them. In the fake mode, the machine measures the distance between the gates and applies the appropriate velocity for length measurement. For example, velocity of 1532 for the anterior chamber and vitreous, like we said, and the velocity of 1641 for the lens. Another concept is the gain. In, in biometry, gain is measured in decibels. The higher the gain, the higher is the spike height and the sensitivity on the screen. However, resolution is reduced. So we, normally we would uh, keep the gain at 50 to 70%. And in, uh, at this setting, you should get separate spikes for the retina and the sclera. If they are merging together and giving one fat spike, then that means the gain is excessive. In a mature cataract, however, you may require to increase the gain as uh, a lot of the sound waves are reflected back from the cataractus lens. Resolution is the ability of the machine to display two in interfaces that lie in close proximity as separate echoes. Like we said, the retina and the sclera, they're quite close, but they should give separate spikes. That means your gain setting is appropriate. If, however, after adjusting the gain settings, you still do not get a scleral spike, then probably your beam is focused on the optic nerve, where there is no sclera. You look at the accuracy of uh, ultrasonic biometry. Let's keep in mind the SRK formula. The SRK formula is the basic formula for IOL power calculation. It says P is equal to A minus 2.5 L minus 0.9 K. So P is the power of the intraocular lens to be implanted. A is the A constant of that particular lens. Minus 2.5 times the length in millimeters, axial length in millimeters. And minus 0.9 times the K metry in diopters. So from this formula itself, we can see that if there is a, if there's an inaccuracy of one millimeter in the axial length, it is going to uh, result in a error of 2.5 diopters in the intraocular lens. Or if it is a 0.1 millimeter error, then it's going to be a 0.25 diopter post-operative refractive error. Shorter, the error is more in shorter eyes and longer eyes are more forgiving. Just a few more measurements. Anterior chamber depth is generally an average of about 3 to 3.24 millimeters and a lens Thickness can vary from four to seven, depending on how mature the cataract is. We look at the spike height. We know that spike height is affected by the difference in densities between the two tissues at the interface. However, spike height is also affected by the angle of incidence, which is determined by the probe orientation. Ideally, the probe orientation should be with the visual axis. The probe should be held in such a way that the beam strikes perpendicular to the cornea, to the anterior surface and posterior surface of the lens, and also perpendicular to the retina to get a high spike amplitude. If it is not aligned, then because of the angle of incidence and angle of reflection, then the, many of the uh, sound waves get deviated from the probe. The smoothness of the interface also plays a part. The smoother the interface, the more are the sound beams which are come, going to come back to the probe. If there is an irregularity of the interface, then again, the sound waves tend to get dispersed. There are three ways of doing a A-scan biometry. 
the most common and uh, popular way is the contact A scan. Contact A scan or the applanation method. This is accomplished by just putting the probe, A scan probe, on the corneal vertex. Of course, after putting topical anesthesia and cleaning the probe. And directing this, uh, we direct the sound beam along the visual axis. There is a red light at the tip of the probe. We can ask the patient to look at it if he can see it. The measurements taken by applanation tend to show some variability from one to the next. Like if you look at the chart at the right bottom, you see that there are axial length readings are uh, from 22.97 to 23.16. They're varying. There's, this is because of corneal compression, which is inconsistent. And even in the best hands, even in the best biometrics, there will be some amount of corneal compression. So what is the way to avoid this corneal compression and for this inaccuracy? We can, uh, to avoid this, we need to go ahead and use the immersion method. Immersion, in immersion A scan, a small scleral shell, usually the Prager type of shell, is placed between the patient's lids and it is filled with saline and the probe, ultrasonic probe is also inserted, immersed in that uh, probe, immersed in the fluid. Once the fluid acts as a coupling agent between the cornea and the ultrasonic probe, then you, you start getting readings. Patient is asked again to look at the red light at the center of the probe. This method is more accurate than the contact method because it avoids corneal compression. The eyes measured by immersion method are on, on an average 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters longer than measured by the contact method. Also on the display scene, uh, display screen you will see six spikes rather than five which you see on contact A scan. This is because there is a separate uh, additional spike at the probe itself. There's one spike at the probe, the next one at the cornea, Third, third one at the anterior segment, anterior surface of the lens, the fourth one at the posterior surface of the lens, and the fifth and the sixth is on the retina and the sclera. A scan can also be done with an AB scan machine. So an immersion B scan, AB scan machine, it prevents corneal compression. And the two-dimensional B scan display helps you to uh, align the A scan uh, ripper to the fovea. A horizontal axial B scan of the posterior fundus is obtained. The center of the cornea and the lens echoes while simultaneously displaying the optic nerve. So if you look at the uh, picture in the right bottom, you'll see that you can see the cornea the, and uh, lens and the retina. And just above the center of the retina is the optic nerve shadow. So you can direct the A scan vector exactly onto the fovea. This is uh, very important when you have a staphyloma, posterior staphyloma, where the macula may be uh, lying on the sloping edge of the staphyloma. Like every machine, there are some limitations. So what are the limitations of A scan biometry? Like we said, the first one is corneal compression. Even in the best hands, you will have some amount of corneal compression, like 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters. And this will cause a, a lesser a measuring of a lesser axial length uh, than the actual. Second point is the broad beam. Although the beam is narrow, but it is still not a pinpoint beam, the ultrasonic beam. And it doesn't just hit the foveola. It reflects off a small area around the foveola. So it's, uh, it's not a totally precise location, localization. Then ultrasonic biometry has its limitation, limited resolution. So the maximum resolution is 0 0.03 millimeters. While an optical biometer has a way, way better resolution. Then there are some incorrect assumptions or we assume certain things about sound velocity. Like in a cataract, you assume it uh, to be 1641 meters per second. But with the grade of cataract, the sound velocity may be slightly different. Also, we do not consider the cornea because it is very thin. The fifth point is the potential for inaccurate measurement distance. This is important. Very often, we do not align the probe properly, which is to be aligned with the visual axis. And we take a reading which is not really focused on the fovea, 
not from the center of the cornea so you get an inaccurate reading so over experience you get to know how to take better readings so are there any advantages to a scan biometry yes there are certain conditions where you cannot do an optical biometry like if the cataract is very dense or there is a dense corneal opacity or a vitreous opacity your optical biometer cannot measure the axial length so the only way to measure an axial length in these conditions is to use ultrasound biometry another reason to have a ultrasound biometer that is that it is relatively inexpensive as compared to ocular biometers so how do you know you achieved a good scan an accurate scan to so have a look at the multiple readings usually a machine will take 8 to 10 readings one after another check the anterior chamber depth of all these readings if you find lot of variation in these then you know that you are causing lot of corneal compression variable corneal compression and that is why you are getting variable axial lengths check the standard deviation for these 8 10 readings it should be ideally less than 0.06 mm better to use the immersion method than the contact method why because it prevents corneal compression when you look at the scan itself you should find the anterior and posterior lens spikes to be high and almost equal they are high only when your perpendicular your probe is perpendicular to them and that is what you want the retinal spike also should be erect starting from the baseline and it should be of the high highest magnitude Scler scleral spike also should be seen behind the retina it should not be one fat spike which is a combination of retina and sclera use ab scans in cases of staphyloma so you can focus exactly on the fovea with the help of the b scan increase the gain in mature cataracts may be required because lot of sound waves get reflected from a mature cataract and if the difference between the two eyes always check both the eyes if the difference between the two eyes is more than 0.3 mm then always recheck it may be possible but in 90% of the eyes you will find that the axial length of both the eyes is within 0.3 mm of each other there are certain special situations we need to know about like if there is silicone oil in the eye following a retinal surgery that same eye may develop a cataract very often it does and needs to undergo cataract surgery however the silicone oil needs to be in place for another 6 months to a year so how do we go ahead and measure the axial length so we know that silicone oil slows down the sound waves to approximately 980 to 1040 meters per second depending on the grade of silicone oil then typically when the ultrasound measurements are made through silicone oil you might get a huge axial length like 35 mm if you do not apply the settings some machines do have a silicone oil setting you can apply that otherwise the way to do it is to use the speed of uh, sound in silicone oil divided by the speed of sound in aqueous multiply by the vitreous length which you are getting apparent vitreous length that will give you the true vitreous length this is just, this is to be added to the rest of the parameters and to find the total axial length another condition is pseudophagia i mean you may need to do a, a scan biometry in a pseudophagic eye so you might have a refractive surprise you might be wanting to go in for a lens exchange or you might be wanting planning surgery for the other eye when you want to compare the axial length of this eye with the earlier eye so in this case you must know the material of the implant because that does make a difference the sound velocity in different materials of the implant is different like the velocity in pmma is 2700 while in acrylic foldable lenses it is 2120 and in rarely used silicon lenses it is like almost like silicon oil which is at 980 to 1100 meters per second so you need to put those velocities and you do have the settings in the machine also you can choose the type of lens you can put it on pseudophagic mode and you can choose the type of lens like pmma acrylic or silicon these are just some uh, references and uh, resources for additional reading a scan biometry is something that all ophthalmologists should know and should not leave it to an assistant the reason is that you might do a very uneventful and very nice surgery 
but at the end of the day if you uh, iol power calculation is inaccurate your patient is going to land up with a refractive error and he's going to be very unhappy that is the reason why ophthalmologist should know about a scan biometry thank you